Hey, thanks for tuning in. My name is Yanis and I'm a content creator with Prezi. And in this video, I'll show you how to create an infographic using Prezi Design. So let's get going. Once you log into your Prezi account, you're going to see the Prezi dashboard. And to access Prezi Design from here, you just have to click on the respective tab on the left of the dashboard. Then to start creating something new within Prezi Design, we have to go through the template library and in order to access that, we can click on start from template or choose one of the project shortcuts available here at the top. In the Prezi Design template library, there's hundreds of various templates that you can use for different use cases. You can see the categories that are available on the left of the dashboard and there you can also create custom sized projects. You can upload your own files to uh, then edit in Prezi Design as well as filter the templates by color. If you'd like to search for something specific, you can use the search bar in the top right corner. So as you can see, there's different templates available for different use cases. There's different styles of templates here. And if you want to get a preview on one of the templates, you can just click on the thumbnail and then you can see what's included in it. We can see that, for example, in this template, there's some images. So this is a comparison infographic. There's some icons. There's some text, some animations already added, and there's even some charts you can see here. So this is a pretty good structure, and I think that this is a template that we could use for today's video. So to start editing this within the editor, we just have to click on use this template at the bottom of the page. So now we are within the Prezi Design Editor with the template that we just selected. And here you can edit the content that you already have on the canvas as well as add new content to the canvas. And if you would like to customize something that's already included in the template, like let's say this title, you can hover over the text box and to start typing something in, you just double click on it and then we can type in our title. So for example, let's use this infographic to compare apples and oranges. And also, as I selected this specific object, you can see that all of its customization options are available on the right of the canvas. For example, we can change the font here, change the color and do many more things. Let's say you also want to change this image. So for that, uh, we can just click on it and then hover over the image thumbnail on the right where it says change image. And then you can upload your own image or you can use the stock library. So for example, well, let's look for an image of oranges. All right, let's use this one. And there you have it here on the canvas now. And if you would like to delete something, so for example, let's go down a bit and let's say we don't need as many shapes that we have here in this template. You can just, for example, select the various objects that you do not need and then you can either uh, right click on them and click delete or you can also tab backspace on your keyboard. And then, for example, we can select all of these. So as you can see, it's really easy to move content around the canvas. You just select it with your mouse and then you can drag it where you want to position it. And you can also easily resize the canvas itself. So for example, here at the bottom, you can see that you can drag this up or down and same goes for both of the sides where you can uh, drag them to the right or to the left. And if we want to add something new to our project, so for example, let's delete this image. And if you want to add something new, you have to go to the toolbar on the left. And for example, here is the option to add graphics. So we could add a video cover, for example, to our infographic. Let's click on that and let's look for a video that has some apples in it. So this would be pretty good. I think we can just easily drag and drop this onto the canvas. It's a bit too large, but we can easily resize all of the objects by dragging the corners in any direction. And there we have it over here. So if you want to add something, just remember that you can add objects from this toolbar on the left. So there's text options, there's various charts for visualizing data, there's uh, almost 900 different maps that you can use, there's the graphics that we just looked at, there's various elements that you can use to speed up your workflow, there's shapes, so as you can see there's already a lot of shapes within this template, and there's also the option to add some integrations here. After I've added new graphics and text to my project, I would like to visualize some indicators. 
For example, here at the bottom, you can see that this template already includes some charts. If you would like to use them or choose another chart, you can select it. And then to add your own indicators, click on edit data where you will see the spreadsheet. Or if you want to change this chart, you can click on its thumbnail here and select a different chart. But now let's delete all of this and let's add a new chart. For that, we're going to have to go to the toolbar on the left. So here you can see the option to add chart. And here we'll find more than 40 different charts. Great for a different kind of use cases. So you can use the search bar to look for something specific. And then once you found a chart you want to use, you can just drag and drop it onto the canvas just like that. Now let's resize it a bit. Like so. Okay, great. And if you have some geographical indicators, you can also add maps here in the toolbar on the left. Also use the search bar to look for a specific map and then just drag and drop it onto the canvas. So now to add our own indicators, we can see that there are some placeholders. All of our maps and charts have those. If you would like to start typing in something, just double click on a cell and start typing in your indicators manually. You can always, of course, copy and paste from external spreadsheets. So for that, we can use a keyboard shortcut. Command V or Control V and there we have our indicators on the canvas. You can also upload Excel and CSV files. Just click on upload file here at the top of the spreadsheet. And also if you click here, you can pick one of the five databases to source your data from there. Now, after we've added our indicators, let's customize our chart. So for that, we're going to have to go to the settings panel on the right. For example, here at the top, we can see the chart properties tab. Let's expand that. So here you can see that it's possible to toggle on or off various features. So for example, let's toggle off the show points option because there's a lot of them on the canvas and I don't want to use them. Then we can go into the color tab where we can, of course, change the color of our chart. So here we can select one of the palette colors, use the color picker or copy and paste the hex color code here. And with this line chart, we can also change the weight and style of the lines. And let's apply it to both, just like that. Under axis and grid, we can, as it says, customize the axes and the grid of our chart. So for example, let's add a title to the Y axis. Just like that, we can see it next to the Y axis. You can also add axis labels here, set the axis range and do much more. Then comes the fonts tab where we can change the font size, font color and the font itself. And if we click on advanced settings here, we can actually customize specific text elements like, for example, increase the axis title. And also let's make the legend a bit larger like that. Then comes the legend tab itself where we can enable it or disable it. Same goes for tooltips. I would encourage you to keep those on at all times if you're sharing your content online so that your viewers can see the information that you visualized when they drag their mouse over your chart. And also here we have the data format tab so we can add a suffix so that viewers understand we're, that we're talking about million units there. And last but not least is the accessibility tab where we can add labels and descriptions to all of the objects that we have on the canvas. And uh, that way the viewers that are using screen readers will understand what's being visualized. And I almost forgot, we also need to add a title to our chart. And then we can resize it. Once we have all of our content in the infographic, it's time to add some finishing touches to our project. And for example, we could add some animations to the objects that we have on the canvas. To animate an object, you have to select it on the canvas and then go to the settings panel on the right where you will see the option to add animation. Once we click on that, we get access to more than 50 different animations and as you can see as I hover over them, we get a preview of the animation and there's some entrance animations, some exit animations, as well as attention seekers. And for this icon, for example, let's use the fade and down animation. And once we select that, we can actually add some additional tweaks to the animation. So here, as you can see, we can use the slider to change the duration of the animation. 
We can also add a delay to the animation, for example, if you want to play several animations one by one. And with the entrance and exit animations, you can also change the distance of the animation. If you click on the drop down here next to play, you can select how your animation will be played. You can select for it to play once when visible. Uh, it can play always, for example, if it's an attention seeking animation, uh, it can play on scroll to view. And if we would have several pages here, we could also have on click animations. If you'd like to preview your animation, you can just click on preview here. And I'm happy with how it looks. And now if we would like to add the same animation to other objects, we don't have to go to the settings panel every time. We can just right click on this icon and there you will see the option to copy animation. And then let's click on this icon over here, right click on it and select paste animation. And we can do the same with this one. And to preview your animations, you can just go into full screen mode by clicking on this button in the top right corner. And there we can see how the animations are played. Another thing we could do is add links to the objects that we have on the canvas. So for example, if we right click on this image here, there you will see the option to add link. For example, here we can add a URL link to the objects that we have on the canvas. You just type your link here, and then click apply, and then your object will link out to that specific page. So you can generate leads or provide additional context on the information that you're visualizing. And also here, if we would have several pages, we could add a link to another page. And this way we can ease the navigation process for our viewers. And if we would have a chart or a map with several tabs, we can also actually add links to specific tabs to the objects that we have on the canvas. And if you would like to change the coloring of your project before you share it, you can of course do it manually, for example, by selecting the shape and then going to the settings panel on the right, but you can also change the entire palette of your project. And for that, we have to go to the project settings on the right. And there under palette and branding, you can click on this thumbnail. And here at the top, actually, if you would be part of a team plan and your admin would have created a brand kit for your team, so you could access it from here. And you can also use the palettes that we have here. So for example, let's click on this one and you can see that all of the colors and fonts change within the project. And let's try out another one. Okay, I think I'm happy with this and uh, I'm going to use this for the final project. All we've got left to do now is download or share our infographic. To download your project, click on the download button in the top right corner of the editor where you will see four different download options. For example, you can download your project as a PNG, JPEG or PDF file. So these three will be static, which means that your interactive elements will also be static in the download. And with the PDF and PNG, you can also use a transparent background for your download. And the fourth option here is the MP4 video option. So with this, you can create videos in Prezi Design. You can then change the duration of the frames. And uh, once you're ready to download your project, just click on the download button here on the right. If you would like to share your content online, click on the share button in the top right corner. There you will see your privacy settings. So if you're a paid subscriber, your projects will be private by default. Otherwise, if you're a free user or if you would like to make your project public, you can click on this option here and then you can share your content by using this link. And if you keep your projects private, you can also create a private link and then you can share it with others and only those who you shared the link with will see your content. So this is how the view page looks and we have our animations intact. We have our chart here. And another neat option that I'd like to mention is the option to embed your content. To access it, just click on the embed icon here in the bottom of this view page where you can access the embed code, which you can then copy and paste into your content management system to use on your website or your blog. And all of the interactive features of your infographic will remain intact. And the last thing I'd like to mention is that you can also use your Prezi design content to record Prezi videos 
and for that you just have to click on record video here in the top right corner then you can select whether you want to use a transparent or a solid background for your content and click record video and that's all there's to it check out our other tutorials and head over to prezi.com to start creating